I want you to think of intuition as a tool. It doesn't replace calculations or software. Instead, I would say it complements it by giving you a sense of direction. It also helps you to spot impractical designs. How about if a structure is not buildable? Software will not tell you that if it is buildable or not buildable. It, you put the numbers, you get the numbers. Some um, impractical designs, they will absolutely look all right on paper, but they will fail in real life. And I will give you one really interesting example. Second question is uh, why to go for uh, intuitions uh, when numbers can speak? This is really, really very important question. And I wanted to cover it first, but first I wanted to tell you that what is intuition actually. It, this is really important. I, I get so much excited with this question actually. <laughs> Let's, and I have a couple of slides as well to make you understand. I want you to think of intuition as a tool. It doesn't replace calculations or software. Instead, I would say it complements it by giving you a sense of direction. It gives you a direction. It helps you catch errors in a software. So software are developed by humans. There could be some errors. And it also helps you to spot impractical designs. How about if a structure is not buildable? Software will not tell you that if it is buildable or not buildable. It, you put the numbers, you get the numbers. Some um, impractical designs, they will absolutely look all right on paper, but they will fail in real life. And I will give you one really interesting example. And here I would like to share my slides as well to show you a very simple example. Two examples, in fact. And one example, I would say my students, they will relate it. <laughs> and it's a very, very simple example. I want you to think about a three-legged stool and a four-legged stool. If a person weighing 90 kg is sitting on three-legged stool, what would be reactions at the ends? What will be reaction at supports? Three-legged stool has three supports. How about if a same person sits on four-legged stool and how load is going to be distributed? What will numbers say? Tell me what will be numbers. The answer is really, really very simple. 90 kg divided by 3. It's 30 kg. 90 kg divided by 4. It's 22.5. This is what numbers tell us. If you are a designer, how would you design it? Would you design it with numbers or would you use your mind to see that what will be potential failures? Tell me about it. What will happen? If you are a designer, you put it in a software or you do it yourself, what would you do? Will you design it with the numbers or will you design some intuition, some mental framework, some of Reality check. Certainly, I would not rely on numbers. Tell me one thing. How about if we have uneven flow? How would you design four-legged stool when you have uneven flow? Will you design each leg for 22.5 kg? Tell me. Would you design it? Okay, so there are a few answers we have received. Uh, one answer is uh, uh, it will be distributed in two legs. Other answer is uh, 30 and 22.5. Okay, one more answer is uh, this wellness know uh, how problem in silo design. 
Okay, I think that is something different. That's something different. Then yeah. Next point is uh, stability will be more in four legged as compared to three legged stool. That is point. Is it? Okay. Okay. Then one more point uh, designing with the intuition that the four legged stool will get overloaded and design accordingly uh, with the factor of safety. Okay. So here, let, let me simplify the things. I like simple things, I like easy things. All right. <laughs> Let me simplify. How about if we have uneven flow? If we have uneven flow, do you think it will drop back and forth between two legs? Absolutely. It will drop back and forth, isn't it? So when it will drop back and forth, what would you do as a designer? Weight is 90 kg. You will design each leg for 45 kg, isn't it? And you will design all together, you will design it for 180 kg rather than 90 kg. Now you would say it's double the design. Yes, it is double the design, but it is the worst case scenario. You have to check all load cases. Software will not tell you absolutely this thing. You have to spot this thing yourself. It's just engineering judgment. It is just common sense. It is just being able to feel the structure and see what could be possible scenarios. And in this case, possible scenario is that four legged stool, it will rock back and forth between two legs. And you will design each leg with 45 kg. So it will have capacity of 45 kg. Now here, you will say to me that Dr. Qureshi, you are just teaching us things which we don't do in real life. But this is not the case. I'll show you an example. <laughs> this is the example where we have a sling with four point loads. By the way, I created this image using chat GPT. I had a real image a few days ago. We had one guest like a speaker from industry who taught us something about temporary uh, structures and they were lifting a bridge and they had real life picture and they faced this problem that four slings the load may not be evenly distributed but chat gpt it created some kind of truck at the bottom <laughs> stuff but you get the concept so if you have a crane sling with four points the load may not be distributed equally among all four. So you will design each leg for double the load, double the maximum capacity. And this is how we got to be thinking in our mind. We have to build structures which are real, which will exist in real life. We have to think about buildability, not just numbers. And by the way, don't think that I'm against against any software. I'm really in favor of software. I like technology. I use technology. This image is created using chat GPT. So technology is something we can't go against. We have to learn and adapt as engineers with this set of technology. Let me give you other very interesting example. The other example is this one. Which bridge is this? It is in London. Can you identify this bridge? It looks amazing. It looks, I'm, I'm very cautious in terms of using amazing or beautiful uh, because my architect friends, they uh, normally don't like it. All right. So, uh, but I'm not saying architecture is just about uh, beauty. It's, it's about function. It's about purpose. It, it's about materials. So architect, architects, they do a great job as well. But aesthetically, it looks really very pleasing. Are we getting any answers? The Millennium Bridge. Uh, yes, in London. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think maybe one of uh, one of my uh, students he is attending as well, or not one of many of his students might be attending. So, <laughs> or as a structural engineer, the people will know it as well. So. So this is Millennium Bridge. When it was constructed in, I think it was 2000, it is termed as Wobbly Bridge as well. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to play this video for you. And you tell me that what is the cause of failure.
people really swarmed to this bridge and see what is happening. It is really, really very shaky. It is wobbly. It is... Now you tell me that what is... what is happening here? And this bridge was was designed and the architects and consultants, they were the world's top architects and consultants. Yeah, so we are getting the responses. It's a, it is dynamic issue, resonance, resonance. Yeah, everyone is saying resonance. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. The main issue here is that people started walking that matched with the natural frequency of the bridge. It's very lightweight bridge. Synchronous walking. And engineers, they did not consider including lateral dampers. So that's why issue happened. Now the real question is that how it could have been avoided? That's the main question. We need to think about it and how Intuition can help us to avoid these failures. I will tell you three steps. Firstly, we have to recognize the risk. Intuition could have flagged potential lateral oscillations in such a lightweight bridge with loads of people walking on it. And you could ask yourself these questions. How will this structure respond to synchronous walking? And this could have led to further analysis. The second point is dynamic testing. Intuition could have encouraged us, as most of you said, to carry out further detailed dynamic simulation with crowd loads to reveal its instability. And third, and the most important point here, is that lateral dampers, they could have been added before it happened. Later, when it went for retrofitting, dampers, tune mass dampers, lateral dampers were added. But how about if we could have added it early on? It would have really benefited us. Now here, there's a really very important for us as engineers to learn. Structural intuition, it helps us foresee potential problems like dynamic instability. Asking the right questions early on, it really, really helps. What happens under unusual conditions? This can prevent really costly failures. Now, I have a question for you. Have you ever worked on a project where intuition has helped you predict a potential failure? It can be a simple thing. It can be a, a sling, four-point sling. It doesn't really have to be really something which is giant. It doesn't have to be Burj Khalifa. But then what's your what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, so simple intuition, like you know, the, the the simple example which I can give you, as I just simply recall when I when you said very simple example. So when we uh, just visit the site, uh, the, it happened before a few years ago. Uh, so the notes were written very clearly in the drawing that the shuttering shall not be removed. But there, uh, and that was the element which was actually hanging from the top. It was a uh, concrete element which was in the actual tension. So, uh, so even even if the notes were mentioned, but uh, uh, considering it as a routine structure, the formwork were removed actually. So this this kind of a simple intuition uh, really uh, you know helps to a great extent. Even if uh, let's say the construction people also get into this, so I, I think many mishaps, many problems also could be uh, avoided. Absolutely, I, I I totally agree, and it's. It can be it can be really very simple things because we as humans we like to start with simple things to understand complex uh, structures. Okay, we have started receiving the response. 
maybe let's say by increasing the stiffness with adding guide okay and then this is yes during a simple modular transport uh, for a lightweight structure uh, next point is uh, good intuition produces good uh, general arrangement uh, which prevents failure even uh, some errors also and uh, then foundation works uh, in water ponding area we used clay soil to closed uh, active water points and ice Abhishek is saying that yes, a pin joint uh, with torsion. It had happened, and I overlooked it. Uh, but thankfully, I had uh, inadvertently, or let's say by uh, intrinsic intuition, provided redundancy, and which uh, took care of the torsion. Right? Okay. Uh, choosing end condition of a particular member like pinned or fixed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hanging scaffolding. Right. 